It is April of 1984 in what used to be Britain. It is now called Airstrip 1. Airstrip 1 is part of Oceania, one of the three superstates that rule the world. Did somebody say dystopia? 39-year-old Winston Smith is heading home from work. He works for the government, called the Party, at the Ministry of Truth. Ironically, the Ministry of Truth is in charge of distorting the truth by manipulating news, entertainment and education. They do this so that everyone supports the party. At the Ministry of Truth, fake news is the news. As Winston makes his way home, he sees the same huge poster on almost every wall. It shows the huge face of Big Brother, the head of the party. He and his secret team, the Thought Police, have eyes and ears everywhere. It's sort of like an evil version of Big Brother, the TV show. Winston arrives at his apartment and nervously takes out a diary. He begins to write in it. In Airstrip 1, writing in a diary is punishable by death, or at least 25 years in a forced labour camp. Sounds like a happy place to be, right? Winston thinks about how he felt a connection with his superior, O'Brien, today. He is convinced that O'Brien is a member of the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood is a counter-revolutionary group led by Emmanuel Goldstein. They aim to overthrow the party. Winston also thinks about his female colleague, Julia, who works at the Ministry of Truth. He has always found her beautiful, but he is very suspicious of her. Winston grows more and more unhappy with this society. What if the party announces that two and two make five? How will anyone say otherwise? What solid proof is there that two and two equal four? However, Winston concludes that freedom is the freedom to say that two plus two make four. Cut to a new day. It is evening. Winston is wandering in a suburb where the proles live. Proles are not party members. They are the underclass in Airstrip 1. Winston enters the shop where he bought his diary. The shop owner, Mr Charrington, greets him kindly. Everything seems fine, right? Not so much. Back at home, Winston is worried. He thinks it's only a matter of time before he's sentenced to death for thought crime. This is the offence of having thoughts that are unacceptable to the party. There are serious rules here in Airstrip 1. Later on, Winston is at work when Julia suddenly slips something into his hand. Julia strides swiftly away as though nothing happened. Finally, Winston unfolds the paper. There, written in large handwriting, are the words, I love you. Scandal. Winston can't believe it. He manages to meet Julia on the weekend in a small grassy area surrounded by trees. They kiss and share their mutual disgust for the party. Winston and Julia continue to meet up in secret. Winston mentions how he longs for freedom and rebellion. Winston goes back to Mr Charrington's shop and asks if he can rent a spare room in the shop for his love affair with Julia. Mr Charrington agrees. What a great guy. One day, when Winston is walking down a corridor of the Ministry of Truth, O'Brien stops Winston to speak with him. He invites Winston to his apartment. Winston also takes Julia with him and they confess their affair and how they want to tear down the party. Seems risky. Sometime later, O'Brien delivers Goldstein's book to Winston. He can hardly believe it. The book describes all the fraudulent and shocking methods the party uses to keep its power. 
The book also explains doublethink. Doublethink is when people accept two conflicting opinions or beliefs at the same time because a government has brainwashed them. The next morning, when Winston and Julia wake up, they are surrounded. Men in black grab them. Mr Charrington enters and Winston meets his eyes. With a shock, he realises that Mr Charrington is a member of the Thought Police. That liar! Winston is thrown into a cell, bustling with both political prisoners and common criminals. A few days later, O'Brien enters the cell. Winston's blood runs cold. O'Brien isn't here to save him. O'Brien isn't on his side. It seems like everybody has it out for Winston. One day, O'Brien brings Winston into a room. Winston is strapped to a machine. O'Brien mentions how Winston wrote, freedom is the freedom to say two plus two make four in his diary. O'Brien raises four fingers and asks Winston how many he sees. And if the party says that it is not four but five, then how many? Four, Winston replies stubbornly. He regrets it instantly. O'Brien electrocutes him. O'Brien keeps holding up four fingers and asks him, How many fingers, Winston? Every time Winston says four, the amount of pain increases until finally, Do you see five fingers? Yes. But one fateful night, Winston makes a horrible mistake. While dreaming, he yells, Julia, 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 my love, Julia. This can't be good for poor Winston. O'Brien enters the cell and says, Room 101. The guards take him there. In the room, Winston is strapped to a chair. O'Brien gestures to a cage full of rats with a mask-like attachment in front of it. Winston freezes. He realises with horror that his head is supposed to fit into the attachment where the rats will eat his flesh. Yuck. As the rats are brought closer, Winston starts screaming like an animal. He has to do something, something to keep the rats away, something to put a wall between himself and the rats. Somebody... Suddenly, Winston is shouting over and over, Do it to Julia! Tell, tear her face off! Strip her to the bones! Not me! Julia! This Big Brother episode is horrible. Cut to Winston in a cafe. He has been released. His mind is foggy. Nowadays, Winston finds that he has trouble thinking about one subject for a long time. He has met Julia once since they were captured. They both betrayed one another. Now, Winston stares at a large poster of Big Brother. How has it taken 40 years for him to see the smile hidden by his moustache? There is no one in the world he loves but Big Brother. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on 1984, check out our more detailed summary of Book One of the novel.